from the Muslim nation, from every one of you, there is 999 of Ya'juj and Ma'juj. We have killed the inhabitants of the world. Let us now kill the inhabitants of the skies, meaning the angels. And they will take their arrows and they will start shooting into the air. And Allah Azza wa Jal will cause their arrows to return with blood on them. And they say, we have now killed the people of the sky. Malakna al-Ard. We are now the kings of earth. So, Ya'juj and Ma'juj. Strange wordings. They're actually two words. Ya'juj is one and Ma'juj is another. And, in, and when you say it in Arabic, for an Arab who listens to that word, Ya'juj and Ma'juj, it's a very harsh and you know, coarse word. It comes from the root word of, of, of uh, ujaj, to be dry, to be dry and to be harsh. And it also comes from the meaning al-aj, meaning when the enemy comes really fast, close to you really fast, comes, attacks you really quickly. So these ya'juj and ma'juj, they are dry and harsh in nature and when they come out they're going to come out so quickly and so fast that you will not be able to stand in front of them you have to run away from them that's what the scholars tell us about these meanings and yet Juj is a tribe and yet Juj is another tribe but they are related and they are actual human beings yet Juj and Juj are human beings they are tribes that actually exist on earth they existed close to the time of Musa alayhi salam in an era of a great, great king named Dhul Qarnayn. Anyone heard of Dhul Qarnayn? Dhul Qarnayn, the man of the two horns. He was called that name because he used to wear a, a hat that had two horns coming out of it. Dhul Qarnayn was an extremely powerful king. And he was a worshipper of Allah, a righteous, just Muslim king. Among the best that ever existed on earth. And... He had so much power, so much authority, that his kingdom reached almost the whole world. Yani, why do I say almost? Because there were parts of the world where civilization hadn't reached yet, as today. But whatever existed in that time, wherever civilization reached, Dhul Qarnayn had power to there, right to the end part of civilization. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Dhul Qarnayn in Surah Al-Kahf, he reached a very far distance in land. He used to go around the whole world to see who is being oppressed, who is doing good to reward them, bringing justice between people. He used to physically go out with his army like that, looking everywhere as far as he can. That's what he spent his life in, traveling the world and applying justice and worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everywhere he went. So Allah describes one of his journeys. He went one time to establish justice. And when he reached, Allah says in the Quran, When he reached the place of the setting of the sun, he found it setting in a murky pond or in a murky water. He found that the sun was setting in uh, there's two recitations here ayn al hamia means cloudy water and then there's another qira'a ayn al hamia boiling hot water and both of these are valid so it was a strange type of lake it was not a regular lake it was a lake that was muddy and very hot and some have said this might be lava or something of this nature allah knows best it was something different rather than regular water it's something different ayn al hamia wa wajada 'indaha qawma and they found he found over there a group of people there was no more land beyond where he reached, meaning Dhul Qarnayn reached the farthest land where nobody could reach even further. There was no more civilization after there. That's what the verse is talking about. He found a passageway between two mountains. The Sad are two mountains. And he found there a group of people, they could not speak to him. What this means is they were cut off from all civilization. He found there people that could hardly understand normal speech. Very primitive in speech. 
So Allah is indicating that Dhul Qarnayn went to a far away land, cut off from human civilization, cut off from contact with other groups of human beings. They couldn't even communicate. And this is the, the height of being cut off from other civilizations. So they communicated through other than speech. Which is, everybody can do this. You can always communicate basic stuff, uh, images and whatnot. So they said to Dhul Qarnayn that Ya'juj and Ma'juj are causing a lot of evil on this earth. So this means that this tribe and Ya'juj and Ma'juj were interacting with one another. So Ya'juj and Ma'juj are causing evil. They are plundering, they are killing us, they're raping, they're causing our damage, they're causing much evil in the land. Can you please help us? Ya'juj and Ma'juj they are corruptors on earth. Now I want you to analyze with me over here. These people who are complaining to Dhul Qarnayn, they were very primitive in lifestyle and in language. So he reached the border of the world where civilization was so behind. And they were trying to explain to him about this other civilization that are even worse than them. That are even more primitive, worse and corruptive than these people that he just met. If we pay you, you are such a mighty king. You have this vast army. You clearly are from a superior civilization. You seem to be a good man because you're so nice to us. Take this money and protect us from Ya'juj and Ma'juj. Can you build a wall between us and them? They come through this valley, build a wall. A barrier between us and them so that they can't come to us and they can be cut off from the world. Then Dhul Qarnayn replies, Whatever Allah has given me is better than your money. I don't need your money. I don't need your money. I will do it fi sabilillahi ta'ala. I will do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what I need from you, fa'ainuni bi quwwatin. You help me with your manpower. I need a lot of help for what I'm about to do. My army won't suffice me. You help me with your physical strength. So Dhul Qarnayn says, Atuni Zubar al Hadid. Bring me uh, pieces of iron or sheets of iron. Zubar is the uh, nuggets, if you like, nuggets of iron. Bring me iron. Hatta idha sawa bayna sadafain. When he had laid it between the two mountains. So he's building a type of barrier with. Iron, which is right now cold. He said, blow. And the blowing here is with the bellows, with the fire. So once he's put the iron there, a massive fire is being built. A fire that is so hot that all of this iron will become molten ore and stick together. So this is the help that he needs from these people. Allah knows how they built such a large fire. Allah knows what they did. But Dhul Qarnayn had the technology to do that. And it was so massive that it is between two mountains. So apparently the people of Ya'juj and Ma'juj were trapped inside an area where they had no escape out of. And Allah says in the Quran, they could neither climb over it, nor could they dig underneath it. This is really what it translates into. So the whole idea here, Allah is telling us that He built a wall or a barrier or a dam, something that was so strong, so impermeable, that nothing can reach and nothing can come, nothing can break it down anymore. No climate, no people, no weaponry, nothing. No one was able to break through it and no one was able to overpower it. It was such a strong wall, impermeable to anything. And when Dhul Qarnayn looked at the people, they looked at this wall and they said, wow, this is a very strong wall. And Dhul Qarnayn wanted to teach them a lesson finally. He said, Qala hadha rahmatun min Rabbi. He said, this is from the mercy of my Lord. This is a mercy from my Lord. And according to one interpreter, he actually fell into sajda, thanking Allah that he was able to do this. So this shows us Dhul Qarnayn realized how evil Ya'juj and Ma'juj are, and he thanked Allah for blocking them up. And then he said, فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ رَبِّي جَعَلَهُ دَكَّاءَ When the promise of Allah will come, and the scholars have interpreted this to mean the day of judgment and the signs of the day of judgment. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause this massive barrier that is impossible for humans to, to penetrate. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause this barrier to crumble and fall flat. It will become level to the ground. And the promise of Allah is true. This is going to happen. What is he saying here? He's saying that the Ajuj and Ajuj will be blocked off from the world until a certain time that is going to come. It is only Allah who will allow for this wall to be destroyed. And when it is destroyed, this Ya'juj and Ma'juj will come out. And 
Allahu alam if anybody has ever reached that place. But if you want to know where it is from the tafsir that I've read, and Allah knows best of course, they indicate that their, situ their position is somewhere near the upper part of the world, towards the North Pole, higher up towards the North Pole area. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best exactly where they are. And Allah says, and we have left them. We have left them, meaning Ya'juj and Ma'juj. It's as if Allah is saying there's a huge quantity of them and they are swarming over one another. Like waves on top of one another, Ya'juj and Ma'juj are swarming over one another. So, Ya'juj and Ma'juj are mentioned only twice in the Quran. This is the first time they are mentioned. And in this time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the origin where do Ya'juj and Ma'juj or what was their story? Dhul Qarnayn block them up. Dhul Qarnayn trap them. And Allah says, we have left them in this trap. And they are so many in quantity. It's as if they're like wasps, like bees, like bugs, like swarming over one another. But they are isolated from mankind. Hatta until this will be Allah's law. Until when? Ida futihat ya'juj wa ma'juj. When we let go of ya'juj and ma'juj, we will open up the doors for ya'juj and ma'juj. Wa hum min kulli hadabin yansilun. And they will be descending from every mountain top. So literally, they're like uh, wasps, like bees, like ants everywhere. And these are the only two references in the Quran to Ya'juj and Ma'juj. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Sahihain, in Bukhari and Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam woke up one afternoon, very concerned, shocked. And he said, La ilaha illallah, out of shock. Wailun lil Arab min sharrin qad iqtarab. Woe to the Arabs. Woe to the Arabs from an evil that is very close. They said, what is the matter, Ya Rasulullah? So he said, قَدْ فُتِحَتْ مِنْ رَدْمِ يَأْجُوجْ وَمَأْجُوجْ from, uh, from the dam of Ya'juj and Ma'juj, there has opened up a small hole the size of this. Today, the wall of Ya'juj and Ma'juj has been opened as much as this. And he made a ring with his fingers. He said, this much has been passed through the wall of Ya'juj and Ma'juj. Then Zainab anha, said, Ya Rasulullah, afanahliku wa fina salihun. He said, will we be destroyed? And among us there are still righteous people? Yani, when he said Ya'juj and Ma'juj, it's basically saying that the, the end of the world has come very near. Allah is going to destroy the world. So Zainab anha, says, Ya Rasulullah, are we going to be destroyed so soon and still among us there are righteous people? There's you, there's the Sahabas, there's all these righteous people whom Allah praised in the Quran. He said, actually, yes, you can be destroyed while righteous people are among you. He said, if the righteous people will be destroyed among the non-righteous people, if on one condition, when indecency and immorality spread too much too much of it, Allah will destroy the people including the righteous people among them. There are two definitions to this or interpretations. Number one, either because the righteous people are not doing their job or the corruption has exceeded so much that the righteous people cannot do anymore so it's time to take them away. The test of the world is, is, is pointless. First of all, the Ajuj and Ajuj are unable to get out of there. Number one, there are many reasons why. Number one, as we said before, they are a very primitive people. Their understanding of technology is not like ours. They don't know what's going on in the world right now. They don't, they don't have computers, they don't have airplanes, they don't have these weaponry we have. They have nothing. And they are between mountains. These mountains are covered with su such bad climate that if they try to go up these mountains, they'll die. So they can't go around or on top of this wall. Some people said this wall is the Great Wall of China. No, it's not the Great Wall of China. The Great Wall of China is broken. You can easily pass through it and on top of it, it's a tourist um, you know, site. And some people, they describe them as being short. You know, they're, they're, like, they're like really, they're like midgets walking around. Or then they've got these strange eyes. And about if, uh, This is all rubbish, you know. There's nothing in the hadith that states that they are like that. Like aliens or something. They are real human beings from the upper part of the world. They have a certain look, maybe, maybe more of an Asian look because it's that region or more, you know, more, more of that type of a look, Allahu Alam. But the point is they are people, they are humans like you and us, but they are just very, very corruptive. They are more corrupted than the corruptive people of today. 
immoral. Uh, no principles, nothing. And when they come out, they just destroy. They destroy, rob, rape, kill, murder, all of these things. The Prophet ﷺ tells us, إِذَا أَوْحَ اللَّهُ إِلَىٰ عِيسَىٰ أَنِّي قَدْ أَخْرَجْتُ عِبَادًا لِي لَا يُدَانُ لِأَحَدٍ بِقِتَالِهِمْ فَحَرِّزْ عِبَادِي إِلَىٰ الطُّورِ these Yajuj and Majuj will come out in a time where Isa alayhi salam has already descended. Isa alayhi salam will be among us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send Jibreel alayhi salam to Isa to tell him alayhi salam that a certain type of creations of mine have now been released. Allah is talking about Yajuj and Majuj. 